okay. So she can't save herself. But her trusty partner should be able to pierce the tentacles with a well-placed arrow, right? Right? The bad doggies. Sit. Down. Stay. Her. Wait, wait, when did they show up? Zack is surrounded by a pack of those demonic dogs from before, the ones that nearly took my life. They must have charged in at the same time as the terrible creature monster made itself known. Were they summoned by a Yuzuki? I wonder. Wait, can she control them? Dentically, dentically. Hello, is anybody actually going to help me here? This isn't fun as it looks, you know. Some girls would disagree. Hikari keeps up a brave fun, but I can see the tentacles are taking the toll on her. This is bad. Both of them are held up by monsters. Oh, well, Sanaki's handling her bow. I don't think she'll be all that good at close-up combat, so she might get in trouble here. And then Hikari is clearly in need of assistance. The tentacles might completely crush her if nothing is done soon. Hopefully that's all they do. So with both of them struggling, who is left to help them? Me! Yay! But I haven't fought anything in my life. I would have been dead long ago if these two hadn't made themselves known in my life. I clench my fist tight and throw a glance between the two girls. They've risked so much to help me before while well, I've stood there on the sidelines like some sort of coward. They need my help. What can I do? I don't have any magical powers. I don't have super strength. I can't fly. I'm useless. Useless, I tell you. I stomp at the ground, cursing my weak nature. Uh, something clatters at my foot. Hikari's sword. A sizable amount of steel that almost rivals Hikari herself in height. Hey, Claymore. Nice. I crouch down to pick it up, despite its size is surprisingly light. I'm able to take it up with just a single hand. This is crazy. I am He-Man. By the power of Grace Corner. I can't believe I'm even thinking about doing this. I straightened up and tightened my hold on the sword, giving it a test swipe in my air. Slices through without much resistance gives off a satisfying swish. I hope it cuts through the air okay. If a sword can't cut through the air, we have bigger issues here. It'll be just as easy, right? Air is one thing, but to even think about using this thing as something on living, even if they're monsters. I'm not sure if I can follow through with this. Yeah! Don't touch me! Back! Back! It's crushing me! Someone help! I can hear cries of distress on both sides. Time is running out. I've made up my mind. I can't save them both at once, though. Who needs help more urgently? Ooh. What am I going to do? Uh, well, I'm going to turn to dice. Now, I realize you guys can't see this right now because my webcam turned off. But I'm going to roll a die. One to three is Saki. Four to six is Akari. And the winner is a number two for Saki. Bye-bye. Right. Saki has numerous far more threatening foes than just a couple of slimy tentacles. Dogs won't rape her. Oh. These things might tear her apart if I wait too long. Saki, hang on. I kick off and head to Saki's first, the sword held up more awkwardly at my side. I really don't know how to even hold this properly. I must look so stupid right now. Shoo, shoo. She gradually bobs and weaves her way out of the incoming claws and fangs, only to the final spare moment to get an arrow out. I pick up the pace nearing the beasts. There isn't a moment to lose, as the battle music wages on. This is my time to shine. I can be the hero. Oof. In my haste to reach back in time, I put a foot in the wrong place and trip myself up in this spectacular display of heroism. I pull into a tumble, barreling straight into one of the creature's sword outstretched. It lets out an ear-piercing howl as the blade comes to contact with it and leaps back, distracting all the others in the process. Well, not exactly what I had in mind, but it worked. Somewhat. After this little stunt, all their burning eyes are on me now. No, no problem. I hold up a shaky sword toward one of them as the gimps circle me rather than Saki. This was what I wanted, right? I, I mean, I saved Saki at least. The beasts all leap at once. We saw from four sides. Oh god, this is going to end then. Even a seasoned swordman would be at disadvantage here. Four arrows fly at once and nail each of the creatures in the head before they can reach me, each of them exploding into a cloud of black smoke. Whew. Another close call, huh? Sayaki grins as she lowers her bow. Ah, that's right. By taking all the monsters, I was able to give Sayaki the room she needed to launch her arrows. All according to plan. Mm -hmm. You're telling me I don't know how you guys can face these things on a daily basis. It's something you can get used to. I ah, can't wait. You surprised me. I didn't think it'd ever be saved by you. Ah, well, it was nothing really. Wait, what was that supposed to mean? Ah, I don't know. Thank you for real. 
She beams with the innocent grin. I'm sure she's definitely meaning something by that, though. Her mouth opens wide as she looks over at Kari's sword that I've been holding in her hand, trembling. Even now, I can't stop shaking after confronting those things. Is that Kari's? How hard did you... Hello? If you guys are done talking over there, someone... Some help would be great right about now. Oh, okay, okay. Calm down. We were getting to it. Getting to it all right. Sakari sighs and knocks an arrow, magic arrow on the bow before living it loose with a bored expression, as if she wasn't even that concerned with Sakari. The lazy yet somehow precise arrow pierces through all the tentacles and wants severing them, severing them clearly, cleanly. The monster still hidden in the shadows lets out some kind of shriek and drops Sakari to the ground before retreating. Oof. She lands with a f slimy splash. Sorry, that was really bad. Barrel. That can't be pleasant. See, you're fine. She's not slimy. Sakari rises and takes a deep breath, about to yell at her partner, but she stops when she notices her sword and bit in my fairly incapable hands. Can't I? I grin nervously and scrub at the back of my head. Uh, I hope you don't mind me borrowing this. It was sort of an emergency. That's not the problem. I'm surprised you could use it. If it makes you feel any better, I really don't do much all with it. Psh, don't be so modest. You were my hero. Saki clasps her hands together and chirps playfully, batting her eyelashes at me with a dreamy expression. She, even though she clearly just messed around, I can still, can't help but let out an awkward laugh as my cheeks flare up. You should have seen him, Akari. He came in charging, looking at all four of them at once. In fact, I think he might have even better than you with a sword. Okay, now she's really making it obvious that I did nothing. Akari squelches over me and snatches her back with a sour expression. Ugh, she gets some of the slap on me. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not sure what exactly happened back there, but I'm certain luck had a huge part of it. No, I mean it. In fact, um, maybe I should just partner with Kenta instead. We'd make the best team ever. She wants to be a couple, not a team. What do you say, Kenta? I'm sure I'd get you sorted out with a nice magical outfit, too. Kari continues to simmer and Saki goes on. I can't even tell if she's being serious at this point. Uh, I'll pass. Aw, thank you. I still think you look great in one of these outfits. I wonder, would my outfit be as uh, light on materials as theirs? Who like shoots, shoots? I feel cold just thinking about wearing one. I don't know how they manage. The car suddenly lights up and strikes a pose blade at the ready. Oh, that girl. Did she? Yuzuki? Yeah, it looks like she got away while we were fussing over her pals. Damn it. We were so close. She stomps her foot in frustration, the slime note about oozing between her toes, giving off a soft squish. Scratch. Squish. Maybe it's for the best. I don't think either of us are in any kind of condition to fight anymore. Zaki struck the sighs dramatically and throws her hands in the air. She's right. Can't imagine how much worse the things would have been if a girl had still been around. How about you, Kanto? How are you holding up? Ooh, me. Let's see. I'm drenched in sweat and my heart is still pumping like crazy from a general rust. I think I might just throw up and my head feels like it might split open at any moment. I'm okay, actually. Oddly enough, I really do feel fine. You just said you had a headache, man. Bullshit. Better than fine. I, in fact, I'm happy I could finally do something, even if it wasn't much, uh, much as a burden for these two. I think it's safe to say that we might call it a night now. Kari <laughs> peers into the darkness, still holding her strong partly. She seems reluctant about giving up on the fight so soon. Come on, Hikari. It's over. We won. Hikari slaps a hand down on Hikari's tent. Saki slaps a hand down on Hikari's tent shoulder and she loosens up just a little and probably slime everywhere. I refuse to believe she would just give up so easily. It doesn't make any sense. Didn't you see her? She was really beat up. I think we did more damage to her than she's letting on. I'd be surprised if she even shows up tomorrow night. Maybe. Hikari finally gives up her sword fitting with a dim light. She reluctantly joins the pair of us and we'll be given the journey home once more. And with that, the chaotic night finally comes to an end. Thank you, everyone. This has been Soccer Angels. See you guys in the next one.